Abe begins in the world where he's fully indoctrinated to misinformation. What makes him special, and this is something, man, I really hope to be able to, to do the movie or a Netflix series of Oddworld. And I think we're getting closer to that possibility because I really, like, I would have the whole first season take place just in Rupture Farms. Like, what was the life what are they being taught? What, why is Abe different? What did he have that's different from all the others? And I never had a chance to really reflect this in the game. And we've got lots of storyboards and lots of notes, and I've written lots of scripts that never make it in, just out of practicality, you know. But what made him different is his connection to the animals. And so as he would sleep at night, he'd hear one cry, but no one else sort of noticed. But he'd be like, no, there's something wrong with that one. Can't you tell? And then he'd, you know, sneak out and kind of risk his his uh, comfort zone to sneak out and go care for a mother who's giving birth, who's having a problem of a cattle, you know. But he I've, I've seen people and I've always been close to animals and uh, uh, they they are working a lot harder to communicate with you than we typically realize. And they have their own wisdoms, you know, uh, and, and we like to write these things off as things like, well, that's just instinct which is kind of the one, a, a blow-off word that I hear scientists use a lot. Uh, well, that's just instinct. And I go, oh, really? Well, please, ex explain instinct for me, please. All right? Y yeah, you can't. You, you, you know, we can re listen to Richard Dawkins go, well, it's just these chemicals. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remove consciousness, and maybe that makes sense, except consciousness is at play. You don't understand anything about consciousness. Smartest people in the world will tell us that, you know, Roger Penrose or, or whoever will tell us how little we understand about the brain and consciousness. And so um, with, with where we were going with, with Abe in this journey, if he starts off in that world, then he's starting off like we are indoctrinated. And then we're just going to turn up the volume and make it ridiculous. Right. But it's his connection to animals and his willingness to listen and, and, and try and process what's going on. And then what he was suffering, because he had basically been someone that lived in a, in a slaughterhouse that was focused more on, he, in his role, I had him as a uh, floor sweeper because it was just easier, right? And, and so we go, okay, that was going on too. But really, he was kind of a midwife to the animals to help them breed because that, that was product. And he was just really good at it. But the reason he was good at it is because he listened to them and he paid attention to them. He's like, can't you see she's, she's got a hurt foot? Can't you see she's struggling and trying to tell us? Can't you see that's a cry of pain and not a... So his empathetic nature is what allowed him to connect to other species. And so that was the beginning of he never lost his heart. And the other guys in the farm were becoming just just the products of the farm. And eventually they would, and that was the, the sort of metaphorical uh, pun of it all, is eventually they do become the product, right? Like, like it's the soil and green of, you know. And so with, uh, with that, we'd say, okay, so we're dealing with characters that are embedded in a misinformed world where everything around them is propaganda except those things that are living. And then those things are all wrapped up in this world as well and compartmentalized and, and forced into being things that they're a lot more than. And so Abe doesn't know about the outside world yet. And when he does, uh, he realizes that, you know, he's in something he had no awareness of whatsoever. And one of the first things he starts to discover is these trials.